Zidane Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the latest chapter, chapter 302 of My Hero Academia, and holy frick. <laughs> honestly, this chapter was insane, because honestly, it really helped us to clear up a lot of the chaos that was going on. Um, one of the things that kind of bothered me in the last chapter was the fact that um, it looked like Toya was br uh, at the breaking point at that moment. But in actuality, they were able to uh, uh, endeavor deciding to split the family a little bit and have um, uh, to have Shoto completely separate from him was actually a result of that almost attack. And honestly, I can understand a little bit of where he's, where Endeavor is coming from with basically everything that is going on in this whole chapter. But at the same time, holy frick, he was messed up. Ugh, yeah. Basically, Endeavor was scared. He was scared really badly by the fact that Toya was trying to do a lot of damage, and they didn't really know what they could do for Toya, and yeah, that's understandable, but at the same time, holy frick, oh boy, this chapter really villainized, uh, the last chapter was kind of helping us to understand Endeavor side of things. This chapter really villainizes him to really show how far down he went. And we, as an audience, know how far down he went if we've read the Vigilantes manga because he he went really far down already. Like, we're already years in the past from this moment, and yeah, that was insane. But the fact is that we see what actually happened. Endeavor was broken. He didn't really know what to do. He was scared, and he felt like distancing himself from his family was the best option. And threw himself into his work with Shoto. And yeah, they... Oh boy, that, that, was, that was rough. That was really rough, actually. Uh... I, uh, but it also cleared up a few things. One, we actually did actually see that, yes, Toya did grow up a little bit longer with the rest of the kids, but unfortunately, when he actually was uh, sick and tired, he wanted to show his father that he could be strong enough. He was stronger than Shoto. He was strong enough to take down All Might. And he continued training, even though his family continued to tell him, no, this is dangerous, you need to be careful. His mom was kind of supportive, basically saying, you need to be careful. Be a hero you want to be, not the hero that your father wants you to be. I know you want to be a hero, but the way that you're going about it is not the right way. And it's insanity to think that they they warned him multiple times you need to stop doing this you are going to get yourself hurt and they know this they warned him multiple times and while absolutely they did not handle it the best way that they could have they tried their best and that's just a fact a lot of people think blame themselves for a lot of mistakes that happen and this shows that they do they really do all of them could have done something to stop toya and they explain at the end of this chapter that every single one of them except for shoto because he was too young could have done something and that would have prevented toya from going down that path ray could have Talk to, uh, could have talked to him more to actually understand where he was coming from, could have helped him to, uh, to calm down and realize this is hurting you. You need 
to act if you want to learn how to do this you need to actually learn from someone who is actually good at this um freaking uh Natsu blames himself for not yelling at his father sooner to say stop focusing so hard on being a hero and take care of your family that's what he blames himself for and uh, Fayumi blames herself for not being there as a family and not speaking out about it every single one of them blames themselves for something and if all of them had done these things they think that they could have improved it but the fact is that sometimes you just can't <sighs> mistakes make us they make us who we are and while we can learn and grow from them sometimes they just need to happen and I think that that is something that they're missing here. Even though they want, uh, at this moment, they want to work together to take, uh, to take down Dobby and to bring him home, to save him from himself. Do they think that it's too late? Absolutely. Do they think that they might still be able to save him? Yes. But by the fact that they are willing to try, it means that they have grown as people. And that is an important fact. Everyone, I think this, this chapter comes out at a perfect time. Because this is extremely similar to cancel culture nowadays. Because a lot of people look back at racist tweets, old tweets, tweets that are absolutely vile and they think that person cannot grow they cannot become better because they said something early on they should not be allowed to do anything this has happened for many many people james gunn for example just when he was fired at first from freaking doing any more Guardians of the Galaxy, which luckily he hasn't actually been, but it was because of the fact that he was a comedian before, and he made some racist jokes before. He was not smart at that point, but he has grown as a person. These things are important for people to actually understand, and it's been happening over and over again. Multiple people. Uh, the person who plays Ralph Dipney in Flash, again, Cancelled because of a stupid joke that he made years ago that he does not agree with anymore. And people don't understand that nowadays. I think that this is actually really important to understand and to get these messages. To see that these people have done things that they are not proud of. They are ashamed of everything that they have done. And they want to work past it. That is why this chapter is so important. And honestly, I love this these past two chapters because they show that, yes, Endeavor and his family made mistakes. But the point of these chapters isn't that they made the mistakes, but that they want to go past them and to fix things. And they are going to stand together as a family for the first time in years. And I mean years they are going to stand together to bring toya home that is their goal and i love this but one of the things that kind of is interesting is that we also get to see a little bit of dobby's side he's thinking oh i'm awful this that and the other thing he's kind of feeling what they are saying about him to a certain degree uh, the thing is that, especially in Japanese culture, they often say things like, oh, someone's talking about you if you sneeze. And it's a com it's a stupidly common thing in Japanese anime and stuff. But in this case, I think that he's actually got that connection. He knows that they are talking about him and that they want to save him. Even if, to a small degree, he knows that they want to help him. And he's starting to feel like he's a monster. He's done terrible things. Which I think is an important aspect. On top of that, we also have Shoto, who is willing 
to stand up. Someone who has hated his father for so long and has been slowly growing more connected with him over these past after over this past year is finally willing to stand up and apologize to his father for hating him so long and to work with him to bring his brother home and everyone knows that to uh, that shoto is the hero of their family he is going to be the one who is going to save their family but i think that through this these images we actually see that shoto doesn't believe that himself what he believes is that he is only part of it because without Midoriya, he never would have accomplished this. They never would have accomplished this. That is the important fact of this. Honestly, like I said, I love these chapters, and I do want to keep talking about them and gush over how crazy these moments are, but at the same time, I also know that we need to actually settle down for a bit and just relax for a while to really think about what the future of this series has in store. Personally, I'm really excited to see the rest of My Hero Academia and to see how this story is going to play out. Will they save Dobby? Will uh, they? <laughs> will Midoriya wake up? And all of the craziness that is about to happen because the next chapter will more than likely either be Deku waking up or something revolving around Deku and the likes, or more uh, more than likely it will there the other possibility is the fact that endeavor and his family are going to go up on that stage to make a statement to say that they are absolutely what dobby said is true but they are not those people anymore they are going to stand together to find dobby to bring him home and to save him they are not the people that they were before, and they are going to grow and become better people. Should uh, should Endeavor be the number one hero anymore? No, absolutely not. But should he still be considered a true hero that deserves the attention? Absolutely. But anyways, guys, that those are my thoughts and theories. So... If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and ring that notification bell, or even if you're not new, because apparently only like about 25% of people are actually subscribed to my channel who watch these videos, so please subscribe. <laughs> um, of course, if you enjoyed the... Uh, uh, <laughs> if you have any thoughts or theories, please leave them down in the comments below. Um, if you, uh, if you are going to leave a theory, make sure to say theory review somewhere in the comments so that we can talk about it in a future video. And of course, if you do want to support the channels even more, then definitely make sure to go down to the description and check out the other two channels, as well as, of course, the our other links, including our social medias, and ways that you can support us financially, including our Patreon, and the merch store, and the book. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!